speakers. One of them's returning, one of them's brand new. We have a little tradition for brand new speakers. So before we get started, we're gonna do a shot. Sure. Take a look, guys. Hello, hello. <clears throat> So good afternoon, everyone. Today, today we will present a topic about uh, kernel security. One byte and all your dreams will come true, analyzing and attacking Apple kernel drivers. So uh, this is Bei Xiaolong. Um, my name is Zheng Mi. You can call me Spark. Uh, we are PhDs and uh, work for Alibaba. So here is the agenda first we briefly introduce what is kernel driver, then we talk about new vulnerabilities in Apple drivers. Uh, after that, we will talk about obstacles in analyzing Apple drivers, and then introduce a new tool called RIC for analyzing and fuzzing kernel drivers. So let's start. First thing you should know is every driver in, uh, in kernel is in XNU is a kernel extension. They share a same space with the kernel. On Mac OS, uh, the drivers locate in the uh, system library extensions. On iOS, drivers are integrated with kernel in the kernel cache. Uh, kernel drivers provide user client which are kernel objects for drivers to provide service to programs in user space. Also, user client is the interface between user space applications and devices. In order to provide services, user clients need to implement several callback methods like external method, client memory for type, register notification port, uh, client close and so on. Uh, the most important method, callback method, is the uh, uh, external method, which provides the methods to user space program. The selector is used to select the method in user client. Arguments are passed to the selected method. Uh, dispatch is a struct, struct representing the method to be called. The target is the target user client for the method to be called on. Reference is the result which is sent back to the user space. Uh, despite the strict uh, sandbox restriction, some user clients are still be accessible to sandbox apps on iOS. For example, uh, IOHID lib user client and uh, IO service root user client. So now we will share some uh, vulnerabilities we found in Apple drivers. Uh, the first thing you should know is the driver is, uh, the driver are good targets for exploiting the kernel because they share the same space with the kernel and they have the same kernel privileges. So uh, some drivers are programmed by third party vendors, not the kernel developers. So uh, the code quality is not guaranteed. So a lot of drivers are frequently exploited uh, in attacks against the kernel, including the jailbreak. Uh, a lot of vulnerabilities are used in jailbreak. For example, iOS 11 used IO surface root. Uh, Pango 9 used uh, first, uh, in, their, in their first version they used uh, uh, IO HID family, and the second version they use the IO buffer frame, uh, IO mobile buffer uh, frame buffer. Uh, the first, uh, this is the first vulnerability. Uh, it is a info information link in IO firmware family. It is caused by an uninitialized kernel uh, stack variable which is out channel handle uh, in the ISO channel alloc case. 
as you can see in the IOCH channel create, the out uh, channel handle is passed into the uh, add object function. In this function, you can see the out handle should be set with the index of new added object. But when the new uh, capacity reaches FFFE, new object will not be added and out handle will not be set. Recall the allocation case in external method. Out handle is an uh, 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 initialized uh, variable and uh, returned to user space. So that is, a info, uh, that is an information link. Uh, you can use this information to help you to get the kernel slide and then defeat KASLR. Uh, the second bug is a user after free vulnerability in the IO accelerator family two. It has a method called as transaction end. In this method, the user client will call transaction end in IO uh, ac acceler uh, display pipe two. Note that all user clients share a same pipe two instance. Pipe two can, uh, contains a link list for transactions and the pipe two will uh, traverse the link list to find a transaction and then call the set transaction arguments for the found transaction. However, in the transaction argument, set transaction arguments function, uh, user client pipe user client two is a member of transaction two, and the function will call the return method uh, of the user client. But the pipe user client can be released by calling IO service close for the uh, from user space, which will call the user after free. So here is the steps for uh, exploit this bug. Firstly, we create two pipe user client. Then we add a transaction for the first user client. And then we release user client. After that, we end the transaction from the second user client. It will trigger the user after free. Uh, but this bug is fixed because and uh, now uh, the pipe user clients don't share a same pipe. Uh, so how to exploit a user after free bug in the kernel? Here is the basic flow. Firstly, we construct the rope chains and then trigger the release. After that, we use a fake object with fake vtable to occupy the, the empty slot. Last but not least, we trigger the use after free by invoking the method of old object. The hip three technique we used in this vulnerability is OS uncentralized XML. Uh, you can invoke it by setting pro properties of a device. Note that the spread data can be read and the head of spread data is controllable. So this is the rope chain for the privilege escalation. Firstly, we use a stack pivot to control the stack and then get the pointer to the struct proc of current process. Then we get the U credit from proc and set CRUID, CRRUID, and CRSVUID to zero. After that, we will use thread exception to exist the kernel mode and return to user mode. Then we can execute the system bash to get a, uh, to get a shell with root privilege. Uh, the stack pivot we used in uh, this rope chain is uh, are the following gadgets are used in the stack pivot. At the beginning, we use IX to control R RCX. Then we use RCX to control ISP, which is the stack pointer. So here is the layout of gadgets in a rope chain. Note that RAX is, is controlled by us. Uh, by using these vulnerabilities, we got a privilege escalation on Mac OS uh, 10.0. 
13, 10.13.2 and 10.13.3. So uh, here is a demo on 10.13.3. As you can see, we got a root shell in, in this in this Mac OS. So uh, Xiaolong will talk more about uh, drivers analyzing and fuzzing. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, Bart. Uh, and next, uh, uh, well, we, we are going to show how we found those vulnerabilities. And uh, Apple drivers are mostly closed sourced. Uh, in order to find the vulnerabilities, we no, need to do some reverse engineering. But it is not that easy. Uh, let's first have a look at uh, uh, the decompiled code of driver binaries in IDEA Pro. In the, depil, uh, in the decompiled code of uh, macOS driver, uh, you can see that uh, the function names are kept, and, uh, but there are many uh, problems, uh, such as wrong parameter inference, uh, lost variable types, and uh, unknown uh, virtual function calls. Uh, as for LS uh, uh, kernel drivers, uh, the situation is even worse. Uh, we have no idea uh, of what this decompiled code represents. It's a mess. In fact, uh, in order to find some vulnerabilities or do some reward, uh, we want the decompiled code to be just like the source code, uh, just like the figures uh, suggest. Uh, so we propose a new tool to analyze uh, drivers in macOS and iOS. Uh, this tool is called RILK, uh, which is a static analysis tool for making uh, Apple drivers decompiled code more like source code. Uh, it is implemented as an IDEA Pro Python script. Uh, the name RILK uh, stands for a character in the comic series, uh, that's note, uh, who loves eating apple. So RILK has several features as below. Uh, it can identify name, size, and weight tables for classes. Uh, it can recover function names, resolve variable types, extend cross-reference, extend the UI support, and uh, construct all uh, call graphs. So firstly, uh, Rilk identifies name and size for classes. Uh, we identify this information from some specific initialization function. Uh, as the figure shows, a sample uh, initialization function looks like this. Uh, you can see that uh, this code indicates some, uh, some information of the class, in, for example, the, uh, its name and its size. Uh, with these identified class name and size, uh, we can create structures in IDEA Pro to represent these classes. Uh, besides, uh, Rook can also identify tables for classes. Uh, you should know that in C++, if a class uh, has uh, any virtual function, uh, it always has a structure called a table to organize its virtual functions, just like the figure suggests. We identify classes with tables with a hint, and that is, ahead of a class uh, with table, there is always a pointer pointing to the class uh, meta, meta class object. This is a special uh, object. And they recall that in the specific, uh, in a special uh, initialization function, uh, uh, this function also, uh, also shows where the metaclass object is. So with about hint, we can use the metaclass object address to find the class we table. And after that, uh, we can uh, create structures in IDEA Pro to represent these we tables. And send the first member uh, of class structures to a pointer uh, uh, to their weight tables. The next feature of Rilk is uh, uh, recovering function names. As we can see, uh, LS drivers are lost of symbols. Uh, functions in LS drivers do not, ha do not have meaningful names at all. They are all uh, meaningless names with, uh, prefixed with some. Uh, we recover function names by leveraging se several facts. The first fact is that most classes in driver are uh, inherited from classes in the kernel. And these kernel classes have symbols. 
The second fact is that in C++, when a, class, uh, when a child class inherits a parent class and uh, always a virtual function, the parent's function and the child's function uh, should have the same name and the same offset as shown in this figure. So with the above facts, we can recover the, na the names of virtual functions that override functions in uh, kernel classes. Actually, this is not a, a complete solution, uh, but it can cover plenty of critical uh, functions. Another critical feature of real case is that it can uh, resolve types of local, uh, local global, uh, global and member variables in the decompiled code. Its method is to first identify local variables types and then perform type propagation, type propagation along control flows. Uh, there are mainly two kinds of local variables, uh, which, which are called parameter variable and stack variable. For parameter variable, we identify their types by leveraging a fact that is, uh, in the binary, C++ function names are encoded with their, uh, the function's class name and the parameter types. So by encoding these names, we can know the function's parameter types just as the uh, figure sh uh, shows. Uh, for stack variables, we identify their creation and initialization by finding some typical uh, functions uh, as listed here. So after variable types are identified, uh, we can propagate its, ty its type along function's control flow graph. Uh, during type propagation, we figure out what variables are assigned, are assigned with the variable whose type are, is defined. Mm and then send the types for them according to the identified type, just, uh, just like this, 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 this figure shows. Next, we extend cross-reference for member variables and uh, virtual functions. We examine every sentence in the decompiled code and, uh, of all functions and check whether any member variable or virtual function is used and then we add a cross reference in the edit pro from the usage of uh, from this usage from this usage to uh, member variable or virtual functions location in their class or weightable structures and uh, then now uh, you can see that uh, the compiled code now looks more like uh, the source code right Uh, further, uh, in order to uh, in, in order for better reward engineering experience, we ex extend U.S. operations uh, in Idea Pro. For example, a a as a demo will show, uh, Rick allows jumping to a virtual function's implementation by just a double click on a virtual function's call. You can see the you can see that when uh, a double click. Uh, we can direct jump to, to the function's implementation. And we can also jump to the child's in, in implementation and by pressing a, a hotkey. Okay. Finally, after variable types are identified, which function calls are resolved, uh, and now we can generate call graphs for all drivers. And this call graph is very important for uh, further inter-procedure uh, uh, control flow and data flow analysis. And now everything is ready. Uh, we can do manual analysis or uh, other kinds of uh, static analysis as we want. Uh, below, we will show a use case of Rook, uh, which is called Rook Fast. Uh, the idea of Rook Fast is to uh, guide uh, driver fuzzing with static analysis resu results. We implement it by integrating Rook with the state-of-art driver fuzzer, uh, passive fuzz framework OS X. Uh, Rook fuzz uh, takes two set steps. In the first step, it performs data flow analysis to infer drivers required uh, user input formats. Uh, the second step uses the inferred input format to uh, get input, uh, to get input generation in the fuzzing process uh, and improve uh, fuzzing efficiency. So in its first step, 
and we perform static uh, data flow analysis in the decompiled code uh, to identify whether uh, user input is checked in conditions and what parts are, uh, are checked and what is the condition. Just like uh, uh, this figure shows that we can identify that uh, uh, the offsets 24 and sides 1 should, be, uh, should not be equal to 6 or 1 in order to uh, avoid this, uh, this, this field pass. And then we can know driver's requirements on user inputs uh, for different uh, execution paths and uh, use such knowledge to get fuzzing. Uh, but uh, passive fuzz framework OS 10 uh, only works on Mac OS 10.11 now. Uh, for later versions, uh, there are ma uh, still, still there, there are several errors that need to be resolved. Uh, the first error is that uh, it uses wrong buffer sets to read the kernel header. Uh, passive fast framework OS 10 uh, suppose that the size of uh, the kernel header is less than one page. But actually, after Mac OS 10.12, uh, the kernel header is larger than one page. In order to solve this problem, uh, we change the buffer size to two pages. The second problem is that uh, uh, passive fast uh, framework OS 10 uses a wrong way to infer the kernel text space. Uh, in its original implementation, it defines the address of interrupt handler, uh, which, uh, which was in the kernel text section, and it uses this address to find the kernel text space. But for now, uh, in the current Mac OS, the interrupt handler is no longer in, in, is in, no longer in the kernel text. Uh, as a result, uh, we cannot find the kernel text space with the handler address. <laughs> this change is caused by Apple's mitigation on uh, the famous meltdown uh, vulnerability. Uh, in order to defend against the meltdown, uh, Apple decides to move the interrupt handler and, other, and some other code related to the user space from the kernel text to another special location, just like the, uh, the figure on the right suggest. So now the uh, interrupt handler is not in the te kernel text space. As a solution, uh, we look for the kernel text space with, an, with another method, that is, uh, we find the, the address of some other uh, kernel functions, for example, uh, the address of lock mutex lock uh, and uh, uh, traverse back to find the kernel text space. And this is more stable than, uh, than, the, than the previous method. Uh, so uh, in, in conclusions, uh, in this talk we have shown several vulnerabilities that uh, can be exploited for um, privilege exclusion on Mac OS. And we have introduced uh, uh, the technique of exploiting user-free vulnerabilities um, in the kernel. And uh, we also explained a new static analysis tool called RILK, and also shows a, a use case called RILK fast. Uh, most importantly, uh, part of the RILK has been open sourced. Uh, you can uh, fork, fork RILK or start RILK on my GitHub. And uh, also, uh, very welcome to follow us on Twitter and uh, Weibo. My Twitter account name is bxl1989, and uh, Spark's Twitter account name is Spark Zheng. Uh, that's all. Uh, thank you for your patience. <laughs>